Hello YouTube, it's Nick here from uh, Railing Kent and some of you may not know but uh, we're not just uh, train spotters on this channel, we're also uh, railway modellers uh, some of you may know that we were even the winners of Channel 5's The Great Model Railway Challenge and so uh, from a slightly different video today on Twitter, uh, Railing Kent, um, I showed uh, one of my latest creations, something that I've been working on uh, this week, is a Mark I uh, Great Western Railway HST barrier coach, which I converted from a Backman full brake, very similar to this NSC one. Uh, I used an Intercity one, but the body is exactly the same. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I did it. So firstly, I'll just explain uh, what a barrier coach actually is. So uh, this is Great Western's barrier coach um, number 6388 as you can see um, and what they do is um, they're put either end of a full rake or mixed rake of uh, Great Western Railway slash First Great Western Mark 3's such as these ones from Hornby um, uh, and it acts uh, as both a barrier um, between the loco and the carriages and also sometimes the loco will not have the same car uh, couplings as the coaches so they put one of these barrier coaches in between so the loco can um, couple up to the barrier coach and then that can couple up onto the Great Western set uh, so I made this uh, because, unfortunately, um, Great Western HSTs are now a thing of the past, and as a modelling prototype you don't see these very often, and they're actually quite frequently used on the main line, uh, tr uh, transferring HST sets from uh, Cornwall to Ely stores, or unfortunately for scrap at Newport or Booths. Uh, so that's why I decided to make this very prototypical carriage. Uh, Google from a website, um, I'll put a link to his website in the description of this video. Uh, he has all sorts of pictures of barrier coaches similar to this one, all of Great Western ones. And I'm going to uh, be making hopefully a Mark II barrier coach uh, in the near future. That's on, um, on delivery from eBay. So yeah, I've printed these off just to um, guide me in making this coach. So that's the first step, yeah. Step two is uh, obviously finding a model to base your uh, barrier coach on. And uh, luckily, Backman produce a Mark I full brake, which is exactly what this is based on. You can pick these up relatively cheap on eBay uh, once they sort of pop up now and then. I got this one in Intercity for about £17, but you could easily get one for about 50, between £15 and £20. So yeah, it's perfect and it's sort of relatively uh, a relatively old-ish model, so it's not too delicate. It's nice and robust though, um, and it's yeah, it's perfect for this model. Step three is getting the body off, which I found to be quite difficult in the end uh, because uh, the screws can be um, a bit temperamental. They can be really loose or they can be very, <laughs> uh, very tight. So what you want to start with is taking the bogies off, um, pretty, pretty simple step. You'll want a either um, a cross a cross headed screw, I think that's what they're called, or just a flat flat headed screw, uh, such as this one, like a and like a really narrow modelling one. I don't think the camera's going to focus, but it's super um, super narrow, and it gets into the sort of really small screws that these Backman models have. So yeah, I'll just take that off for you now. 
a very useful tool that I've um, found is making a sort of foam base such as this so the carriage doesn't rock over and it's got a nice soft fo uh, foam base so the roof detailing doesn't become too scuffed while you're doing this work. So taking the bogies off is a pretty simple process. Can be quite tight, but um, once you get going, it will loosen up. And obviously, you want uh, to put these in a pot of some sort. Here's a oh, here's sort of a um, cheap plastic pot, and you want to keep all of your things in one place. Very useful. And the bogey comes off. Uh, now what's underneath, this is exactly the same model as the one I use by the way, so obviously but uh, but in, in city livery so is it the same process. What's underneath is the sort of um, coupling mechanism uh, with a very delicate screw, uh, sorry not screw, uh, spring. You want to be very careful of this. Uh, this became unhooked twice whilst I was working on this and it's very difficult to put back on so just be careful of that. Um, <clears throat> but the reason for actually taking the bogies off is um, if you sort of push this to sort of one side you can see there a screw um, has appeared. Now you can either you can either push the, uh, the spring mechanism forward like this to unscrew it or you can lift it out um, either way, it's sort of the same. It's it's it makes no difference either way, really. But this is where difficulties can be um, arisen. This is quite a tight screw, like I experienced with my own model. But um, yeah, it's quite. A, quite simple in the end you just take the screw out this is a screw that attaches to the inside um, sort of detailing um, and I just found it quite useful to take this out uh, on my model because it's sort of this is what the inside looks like it's sort of this plastic base with uh, Sort of a guard compartment. This is this is this will be exactly the same as, as the one inside this. Um, but I took it out because it's sort of it limits how much you can take the um, body off from the chassis. It sort of um, helps keep the uh, body like in place. So I took it out. So this now I can lift the body off. Uh, much quicker and easier than had I kept this in. So it's sort of an optional thing that I'm doing here, but if you want to um, make your life a bit easier, you'll want to take this off. Now, um, like I said with the screws, they can be very tight. So um, something that you can do is sort of uh, get some pliers and sort of cut the screw hole I see I guess you can call it and that then you can um, either remove the screw from this end or just unscrew it from the bottom here um, it just makes it easier because it's really s screwed in tight into this so I just cut the plastic sort of screw hole away and that became much easier so that's sort of like a optional hint for you on step three I think <laughs> Now I don't actually want to take the roof off of this because it's a nice NSE coach that uh, we use in our NSE rake. So I'm just going to leave that as it is and show you the inside of my detailed one that I've finished. So as you can see I've made it so that it's very easy, albeit a bit sticky because some paints I've recently painted it, to take the body off, very simple and obviously the plastic cheap cheap thingy interior would go sort of 
over that, but I've <laughs> I very rudimentally duct taped the um, sort of lead weight that sits in a recess here. That just gives weight to the coach, and I've used duct tape because I didn't want to glue it in case that it sort of spilled over the sides. So I just duct taped it, and it does the job uh, exactly the same as glue was. So there's nothing um, much on the inside um, to worry about in this cons uh, in this construction. It's all exterior stuff. Um, but just if you are going to get rid of the um, plastic sort of interior that doesn't show on the outside model because you're bar barring up the windows, um, just make sure to glue in the lead weight because the plastic interior holds the weight in place. So we'll just take a look at the underside details. Now I've just tested some paints on the underside, that's sort of a classic thing that I do. So um, yeah I'll show you the underside now in more detail. Okay so let's just compare the underside details of the um, un, un, um, the bog standard original so you can see there's a big vacuum uh, sorry battery box here um, we've got I think something to do with the brakes here maybe um, vacuum brakes here there's another battery box here uh, these three details the two battery boxes and this are removed on the underside of this because that is prototypical they it's there's no need for any of those things on the actual coach so I've um, cut them away uh, with a craft knife I just sort of got in between got um, underneath it and sort of sort of in a sawing action cut it away and then um, quite simply just sort of snapped it off and you can see where it was glued in. There was no damage and you can't see it from the side, there's no um, lasting damage that is done by this but that was done for the two battery boxes and for the sort of vacuum brake thingy. Uh, let's see, I just used some clippers and clipped it off. So that, that's um, that's sort of it for underside, underside details. Uh, you'll you'll also you don't have to, but in the prototype, the springs are painted red. Uh, an original Backman model does not have this feature, so I painted it red just with some Citadel Warhammer paints. The two springs on each wheel axis and the little springs uh, in there. Uh, another detail that might go over some heads um, on each on each guard door or sort of um, guard door there's a sort of step to make access onto the platform easier on the real thing as you can see there are only one set of steps and that's the one that goes into the sort of guard door. I don't know what's actually in these wagons, as I imagine it's nothing. But see, all the other ones have been cut off. So on my one, all of them have been cut off except for the one underneath the guard door. And I use some now at rail yellow paint to sort of. This camera isn't great for close <laughs> close ups, but um, yeah, I just painted around the edge as the real thing does. Okay, so that's the underside detail. Um, now for the gangway detail. Obviously, this uh, barrier wagon has no need for gangways, so they're cut off. Simply, simply put, um, this was one of the most time-consuming things about this uh, conversion. It didn't take me too long to actually do all of the things. It just, uh, I just did it day by day, a little bit each day. But um, as you can see on the Backman one, you've got a set of steps up to the roof. You've got a sort of, um, I think this is an additional step to protect the 
gangway, I imagine. And also, obviously, the gangway sort of sleeve area. And also sort of some piping detail, the um, tamp uh, tail lamp detail, and also this brass um, handrail. Those have obviously all been sawn off and um, sanded. So I used a craft saw such as this and got um, sort of in between all of the details and cut off. Um, for these steps, I used um, one of the clippers to just cut them off. That was uh, a relatively easy process and then um, after I've sawn through the gangways you can sort of pull it off because there's four, pin, um, four pins that go into the body here and once you've sawn through the top two it sort of becomes loose and you can either prise it off or you can keep sawing down just be careful not to saw through the buffers and it's probably recommended to take the couplings off as well that's quite an easy thing to do and for uh, the last thing I actually added on these coaches was these white handrails. My dad picked them up somewhere, I'm not sure where. I think he said they were from Helljan. Some just regular plastic white handrails and they perfectly suited this model. So it was a simple job of drilling through the body up here and here and here and just gluing them in place. Uh, this was I, I did this as a last measure. Also, I did this last so that I didn't have to paint them blue and then paint them white again. So that is it for the end details. If you've got any other uh, queries about sort of the end, end details, you can ask me in the comments. Okay, something I forgot to mention was um, how I infilled the sort of gangway area. You can sort of see the outline of the plastic card. Um, this is two millimeter thick maybe, so slightly um, still got a bit bent to it. It can it's um it just needs to be sort of the the thickness of the recess that is left when you saw off the gangway. So you just cut out a um, plastic card piece that fits the gap and then um, Using, uh, let's see, some Dulux or any other brand uh, plastic putty, and just in a sort of standard pr procedure, um, fill in the gap left between the um, plastic card and the rest of the model and sand it away. There's a lot of sanding involved on these edges to get it as smooth as it is. Uh, seeing that all of this is sort of moulded onto the styrene black plastic. So that's going to be the challenge, just getting it as flat as possible to represent the actual model, uh, the actual coach in real life. Another thing that should be mentioned when taking the body off is Backman have this uh, very delicate um, piping that comes through a hole here and into the roof. Now I got uh, flummoxed by this at, at first and I had to look on some online forums but it's quite simple you get some tweezers and pull that out because it's it's not glued in it's loose you can pull that out because it's and it, because it's wire uh, metal wire it bends but it sort of pings back to its original shape you can pull that out and then either leave it in here, but, but for this model you're going to want to take it out anyway, so you can pl uh, ply it out down here as well. And then you'll do that for the other side as well, and that will allow you to take the body off. Make sure, uh, yeah, make sure you do that before <coughs> trying to take the body off, otherwise they'll just sort of snap maybe and potentially damage the bodywork. Okay, we've looked at the uh, sort of chassis, and this now we can look at the body of it. It's comprised of quite simply two walls 
and a roof. You can, I believe, take these three parts, um, you can pull them apart, but I didn't want to do that and I didn't know how, because sort of, you can see there's sort of some clips, some clips, uh, but I didn't know how to take them off, so, and there was no real need to. So, um, we'll start with roof details. Um, you can be really picky about the detail. You can saw off all these sort of lines on the roof because the actual thing doesn't have these lines, but I decided to sort of sand some of them uh, to sort of make them less pronounced, but I just didn't see the point in um, sanding all these lines off. It would be a real boring task. Uh, you can see on the NSC full break, there's sort of a... Uh, a wire here that can be removed with um, either clipping them, uh, clipping one end and then sort of pliering the other, or cutting both ends and then getting a um, sanding stick or a metal uh, file and filing them off. Uh, filing them off, and you'll be left with um, no details. I think there's a little hole there from where it went in but that's not very noticeable you can see if I'm, you can see it on this end as well but that's really it for the roof there's um, no additional steps needed in the conversion now to the main aesthetic of the model itself the sides now the main difference you'll notice is that these have been uh, the windows have been boarded up uh, I used let's have a look very thin, very very thin plastic card uh, that makes perfect sort of um, metal sheets to board up the windows. On the real thing they have a sort of slight curve to the corners that was quite difficult to replicate in double O, uh, double o gauge so I just sort of um, squared them off and you can't really notice but, so uh, yeah, you want to make eight of these, four in the smaller window size and four for each side um, of the bigger windows. This is about, uh, oh, was it about six millimetres across, uh, 11 high, maybe seven millimetres across, 11 high. This was 14 up and 10 across. So you want to make eight for one side and eight for the other. Um, it's quite simple. You just sort of um, get liquid poly such as this from Deluxe Materials. Um, this has got a brush, so you sort of just either paint glue around the edge of the window and then put them on, or you can put them on and sort of delicately uh, paint glue around the uh, joints so all around it um, to glue it in. This is quite a delicate process so just be careful of this um, it can easily go wrong just don't get frustrated it's very easy to get frustrated with something like this um, and obviously you want to keep the middle one um, clear. Now comes the fun bit of painting it um, to start with, you want to mask off this window um, and spray the whole body, like taken taken off from the chassis in matte black or matte um, matte grey primer. Primer is really really useful for spraying um, your final colour over it because it sticks to it better and um, is a nice sort of consistent. Um, painting surface. Now for the colours, um, what did I start with? I sort of gave the un under frame a sort of um, brush over in uh, Citadel Abaddon Black. I really like the Citadel paints. I used to do Warhammer and these are really good paints for all sorts of modelling. So I sort of painted the underside black just because it's sort of a better colour than the standard uh, styrene plastic black 
and then sort of you can weather it down more and it looks a lot better than just painting um, or just weathering the styrene black plastic. Obviously I've talked about the little details um, you've got the yellow steps, the white handrails uh, or an orange band you'll want to mask um, sort of with masking tape just underneath so none of the orange runs onto the blue. I used a flat um, Tamiya X4 for orange, I think I think it's X4 or X6. Uh, just toned down with a little bit of black um, because it was quite a bright orange and this um, didn't really need a bright orange so I just toned it down a little bit. And obviously for the ends I've masked, um, got two bits of tape masked just underneath um, the yellow band, uh, orange band and one above and just painted it three coats of um, my mixed up orange um, to achieve this effect. Obviously, I th um, Also I painted these down in the Abaddon black. Um, you want to do this at the end, I'll get onto the blue now, you want to do this at the end once everything else is done so you don't have to keep painting around the orange. So yeah, the blue itself is a mix of more Citadel paints. It is Citadel, um, Foenican purple, I don't know how you say that, and Ultramarines blue. It's sort of more blue than purple. Just start with a bit of this in a pot and then slowly add this until you get the desired F um, FGW purple that you want. It's sort of a sort of very light purple, very dark blue, sort of teetering on the edge. I was quite happy with the finished uh, paint job, um, and I used just a standard airbrush. They come in all sorts of sizes, but you'll want to make sure it's nice and thin. I completed this in two coats of. Um, the mixed up purple blue slash blue uh, it can be achieved in as many sort of thin coats as you want but yeah I'm quite happy with the finished colour result now for the roof the roof is a rail match let's see rail match roof dirt so it's sort of a very dark grey uh, that was just thinned down again and sprayed on with obviously masking the orange. You also, the sort of um, curved bit just above the orange band sort of where it gets really sharp and um, the airbrush, airbrush can't reach I just sort of came in with a paintbrush and painted the roof dirt in this sort of gap I suppose. The final step unless there's something I miss, I've missed and I'm sure there probably is and if you need help just ask me in the comments. These transfers are from Railtech um, transfers. They are amazing and I've used them before but they come in this packet, these ones that you want. It's called um, EMU Translator. I think that's what you type in on their website and they have a whole sheet of barrier wagons and I'll be making 6330 next. I think that's the Mark II and it's got them all, all the stickers you need. It comes with um, three, so if you mess one up, you've got a spare. Uh, and those are very useful if you're clumsy like me. Reasonably priced, £5.90 uh, £5 I think. Um, well, depending on how you look at it, I, there's no sort of real way of making this yourself. So I think for the price, the quality is um, it's well worth, well worth the price of the quality. So I've got the Great Western um, prototypically between these two doors here and the number in that corner and also the other sticker is the sort of uh, um, barrier, uh, the coach details is a just incredibly small detail, oh the camera's going out of focus there um, but yeah, those are the stickers you want. 
Um, and then the final step, final, final, final step, is weathering. I've just done this today. Um, this can be whatever colour you want. It can be however um, dark you want it to be, however light you want it to be, how sort of heavy as well. Now I'm sort of relatively new to airbrushing, so I just sort of had a mixed up of brown, orangey brown and black. It can be whatever whatever you want it to be. Um, and s gently, with lots and lots of thinner, gently went over the bottom of the wagon. I sort of you can sort of spray the over, you spray, um, spray it just gently down. It tones it down nicely and sort of blends in with the the more weathered bit along the bottom. You don't have to mask off the window. I didn't. Um, and here's the other side. Unfortunately, I got a bit of a scratch on this window, so I've had to paint over it. I'm a bit annoyed with myself. Um, <sighs> I'm going to have to tone this down somehow. Um, but yeah, this is both sides. Um, there's no... I didn't weather the roof. I know people can do. But I just left it at this. So this is the final completed model. I'm very happy with it. It's on my first ever attempt at a conversion of a wagon or a coach. It's a sort of a side-by-side -side comparison. This is what you start off with. Um, and then it ends up looking like that. The most difficult bit is was probably disassembling it in the first place because this is my first time with a Backman kit, um, Backman model. So sort of just fun, uh, feeling around the model and were, um, sort of finding out how it all is put together um, can be a really valuable asset because you'll know where the screws go. Um, how it's how it's put together at the end, and any sort of customization you want to make to it. So, this has been my showcase of my Great Western Barrier Coach. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask in the comments. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe for more content. I'll be making a Mark II Barrier Coach, and maybe I'll show you the whole process of me making it. So, thanks and goodbye.